Because I, I thought that aging, muscle decline, this sort of senescence, I think it's called, of the, of the body and the muscles is inevitable. And this is unequivocal evidence that it's not. That if I make good decisions now, if I become a triathlete, I can have the flank steak thighs when I'm 70. What it tells you is that there is no age or time in your life when your body will not respond to the positive stress you put upon it. And it takes daily investment. It's not like you can store it all up and then ride on it. Mm -hmm. it yeah, it's so, it's so important. One of the things that's been a real revelation for me is this idea that muscle is so critical as I get older. Yeah. Um, I often think about different exercises that I should be doing as I age. And, you know, sometimes I think about um, running, but I, but it's quite, I don't know, I worry about joint pains and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a bit of an upper body workout freak. I just focus on my upper body. Um, what do you think of my exercise regime? What should I be adding to it to make sure that I can have the flank steak thighs, but also just a longer health span? You know, what's critical uh, for long-term function is being able to stay upright. So it's all great that you're making big arms and have upper body strength, can do pull-ups and you lift so your suitcase above the Thank in you. the airplane. Thanks. But what you really want to do when you're 97 is walk anywhere you want to, go up and down the stairs, do, you know, drive any car you want to, and that takes lower body strength. So all your biggest muscles in your body are below your belly button. So if I were you and had all this trajectory of time I would work equally as hard on my my glutes, my quads, my hamstrings, my calves, every muscle below your body. But not only would I work on my strength to get bigger, but I would focus on power. And those are different lifting techniques, right? The hypertrophy aspect of growing big muscles because they look really great. Uh, you do now, and I am not a... I am not a, a trainer, but I've done this quite a while. So trainers, you're welcome to add in. But uh, you do more reps of lighter weights because that will stimulate hypertrophy. If we're truly building hypertrophy. a growth of muscle, okay. bigger biceps, if we're truly interested in power and longevity, which is why I lift, I lift for longevity and power because I am not going to be that little old lady frail in a bed unless I can help it, right? I mean, I'm going to help it. I'm so determined. Um, I want to be able to lift heavy. So that is fewer reps, but much heavier weight. So number one, you got to lift with your legs. Number two, people become frail for a number of reasons, but another reason people lose their independence is they lose their ability to balance and they're falling all the time. And when you fall, no matter how good your bones are, you are liable to break something. And so I always train my people not only in muscle building or carrying a load, as I like to call it, but in equilibrium and foot speed. So in the in the place I put my office, it's a performance center. It's surrounded with all the bells and whistles of the best performance stuff. And we have a speed and agility coach who usually works with elite Division One track athletes. Well, I had her design foot speed and agility drills for midlife people because I do this all the time. I put my, my red work bag too close to my desk. I get up quickly, my bag's in the way, and I trip. But because I've got the foot speed, I can hop over it. Mm -hmm. But if I hadn't retrained that, I might have tripped over it and landed on my hip and broken something. So it's important as we're going forward, yes, I want you to increase your muscle lifting in your lower body, but I want you to work on speed and agility drills so you stay nimble, stay able, able to balance and don't fall down.